on the last video that we did for the, the power sliding doors, that was on a Toyota. So we're going to run through a problem here that uh, you might run into on the Chryslers. We're going to go through step by step on how to figure this out. If you don't have a scan tool or if you do, it doesn't matter. We, you know, we could still work with this. You don't have to have special tools to do it. So say you have one of these Chrysler vehicles, this is a 2004, and you activate or try to open or close the sliding doors power using a button and it'll stop some way midway, either opening or closing. You can shut the door or open it and it'll work again until it hits somewhere midway and then it just stops, it just goes dead. Well, assuming that you inspect the rollers and everything checks out fine there, let's make sure that's okay, which it is on this vehicle. Um, the next thing you'd be very suspicious about would be the wiring in the track here. These wires over time will fatigue, they'll break. Um, sometimes you want to be able to tell they break because they break inside of the, the, the uh, wire you know, sheeting, the insulation. And so once it hits that point, if it loses communication with any of these switches or the door module that's in here, it'll stop working right there. So if you have a scan tool, I already have this apart. I should have to this video to show you more detail, but if you have a scan tool, one of the indicators of um, this happening losing communication or losing power as you access the rear module go into your list of modules and access the, the door module whichever one you're working on and go to data watch the data nothing in particular you're looking for so to speak but just watch the data and then open the door that you're having the problem with or close it you may lose communication all of a sudden it's showing you data and then it just goes blank it just goes dead now with a scan tool we're talking about, you'd have to have um, something a little more than just a standard code reader because those won't access door modules. So um, if you have a scan tool, it has to have you know, a little advanced features. But if you lose communication, you just slowly move that door back and forth and communication is reestablished. That's an indicator right there. You have a problem in the wiring. Okay? So... If everything else checks fine, and this is a symptom you have, the door cuts out midway at some point, then we pretty much are going into the wiring here. So let's zoom in on this track here, and uh, I'll show you how you can check it. It's pretty simple. So what I did is I already pulled this track out. Right? This is where all your wires run. You have a couple larger gauge and a number of smaller gauge wires. And to open this harness up, it's pretty easy. It sits in there. If you could see this little part right here, that slides on a metal tab right here. It just slides on like that. So all you gotta do is just pull it back, straight back, and you can bring this whole track out, okay? Uh, just a word of caution, when you're pulling this out, I would wear gloves um, because inevitably it'll, it'll let loose and you'll smack your hands on one of these sharp pieces of metal. And don't ask me how I know that. But, so once you get this out, just use a sharp pick and you can open these up right here you just put a pick in there and just pop straight up just open all of them up that you need our problem was right in this section here okay now you see two are broken here these weren't broken when I took them out they were broken but they weren't totally apart okay so They'll flex and just run your hand down each wire and you'll be able to feel where it's broken inside of the insulation. It'll feel like a bump, if you could see that right there. How it just, there was a bump there inside of it. So once you get to that part and suspect that's where it's at, just slowly start to pull it apart. And it just came right apart because the only thing holding it together was the insulation so now we have two that are broken that I found now let's talk about repairing that you don't want to use okay so you don't want to use uh, what's butt connectors either an insulated um, or the weatherproof ones, there's you don't want to put those in there. Okay, there's not enough room 
and second it's supposed to flex you need it to flex and this is it might fix it for a very very short time but it's gonna fail again there's no question about that so soldering them back together right here as well is something that won't be a long-term repair because you want this wire to be able to flex in there nice and smooth if you have a hard solder joint and you put heat shrink over it and that's going to be a part where it's going to break on either side of that solder joint so the best way to fix this would be to come up in here to the fix section <clears throat> we're going to take this apart we're going to solder in the wires back here where it doesn't flex and then run a new wire as far up as we possibly can on this end over here all right and that'll give us a permanent repair that'll be reliable and uh, we'll get this door back working so i'm gonna go ahead and take this apart some more and then I'll get them soldered in and we'll get it back together and confirm everything works. But it's pretty easy to figure this out. Again, if that door stops midway and the rollers are fine on the door, the three hinges, then highly suspect that there's a problem in the wiring and it's going to be in this part that flexes somewhere in this area here. So really easy to figure out and take apart. Okay, so if you have primary wire, I mean, I, ch I personally try to use similar colors. This was a green and it goes to a black and green. Um, this one's black and I'm gonna, I do have black primary just to make it easier for somebody in the future if something comes up. And I mean, if you can't, you can't, but it's always nice to be able to help somebody out in the future if they have to get in here and there's not total confusion as far as what happened in the past, you know. The heat shrink that I used has a sealant on the inside, so when it melts, uh, shrinks, it'll also uh, seal. The sealant will melt in there as well. So just put them all back in the track here. Just put them all back in here. You don't have to take these apart up here, only these that pop out. And then um, if these do come apart accidentally, just push them back together. It's not that big of a deal. So there's our finished track with the wiring repaired in there. So from here, this point up here, all the way to as far back as we can go, this is the main flex area where you're most likely going to see the failure. And then again, this goes in here like this. There's the tab right there, if you could see that. And you get some light on it. Right there. You can see that right there. It just slides right on there like that sits in there and there's your track so this is not going to flex up here where we re repaired the solder joint and as far back as here as we went that's not going to be a problem back there this is your main area okay so as we can see right there Okay, so our track's all back in, and okay. Well, let's fire it up and watch it work. Okay. Okay. Alright, so that repair is complete and uh, if you have any questions just post them and ask.